Hey you guys, happy Friday. Um, my name's Lauren. My name is <laughs> Kaylin. Um, I've been on staff, I don't know why I did it like that. I've been on staff since this past August. Um, yeah. And I've been on staff since last Sept- September. I don't actually remember when I joined staff. I've been on staff for a little over the, a year. That's all I know. <laughs> cool. Um, so tonight we wanted to talk to you guys about Bible study, um, mainly because it's something Lauren and I have done a lot of. We both did the School of Biblical Studies, which is a very intense nine-month school where you study through every book of the Bible. It's wonderful. Um, but when we were thinking of what we could talk about, the verse that came to our mind was 2 Timothy 3.16, which says... All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And so our heart for this is just to see that studying the Bible, yes, it's it has a knowledge factor to it where you gain more information, um, but also it has effects outside of just what you know. And so um, the first thing that we're going to talk about tonight is how studying the Bible has just affected our perspective of the Bible. And so I'll go first. Um, I grew up in a Christian family and something that I kind of realized I struggled with when I came to do my DTS was I felt a lot of shame and guilt when I read the Bible because um, I felt like it just told me what I was doing wrong. I didn't really see anything good in it. It didn't make me feel good. I feel like I was connecting to God. Um, Yeah, and so that just really made me feel alone and isolated because I saw like all my friends enjoying reading the Bible, but really when I read it, I just saw like this list of all these things that I did wrong that meant I wasn't worthy to approach God or be with him. And that affected even like my prayer life um, and like worship times. I just like wasn't willing to engage because I was really scared that I was like not worthy of that. And so Bible study completely transformed that. Um, and my SBS kind of wrecked that idea and showed me all of like the love and the grace that is in the Bible and how beautiful it is to approach it even if you have sinned recently. Um, how has it affected your perspective? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really similar. Um, when I was growing up, I also grew up in a Christian home, which was the best thing ever, but I also didn't really understand... Um, who God was and how gracious he was, kind of like what you were saying. Um, I just kind of saw the Bible as something that showed me what I was doing wrong. It, you know, it has the commandments. It points out, like, all the things that we're supposed to be doing. Um, It shows us that God is this miraculous being, and we are just lowly humans that need (laughs) to, you know, submit and follow the rules. And, like, I just felt like I kept struggling um, being able to follow the rules and being able to do things right. And I didn't want to read the Bible because of that. Um, it was showing me everything that I was doing wrong and no one, <laughs> no one likes constant yeah. correction is what I felt like um, was happening. But, you know, kind of as I grew up, I was still attracted to Jesus and still attracted to the message of the Bible, but didn't, you know, understand how to read it or how to see God as the same throughout the whole Mm -hmm. Bible, which I think a lot of people um, struggle with, like between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, And so, yeah, one of the biggest breakthroughs that I had um, studying it was understanding more of who God is and having revelations of how gracious he is and how much freedom there is at the cross and how supernatural like redemption is and all of those things like it made me want to obey Mm -hmm. and that was like the biggest transformation that I had like in studying it because um like I wanted to follow the rules because I loved the god that made them and not loved I still love the god (laughs) that made them Um, and um yeah just like seeing that they're a benefit to us like I'm not the judge of the law or like the rules Mm -hmm. um and thank god that i'm not (laughs) the judge because he's way more experienced in that department than i am but um yeah and really understanding like he's so good and he made those laws for us to have um life to the full and life with him and stuff so that was probably the biggest thing for me um yeah after studying it like what type 
sorts of outcomes have you seen in your life? Yeah, so um, something that I personally have struggled with in the past is just the idea of like trying to make myself better. I've be- always kind of been someone that likes to set goals, and I set big goals, and then when I don't meet them, I get angry. And so I think most of my Christian life, I kind of fooled myself into thinking that God was changing me when really I was setting goals for myself that I kept failing at because I can't do anything on my own. And so I think the biggest thing that I've seen in my life from studying the Bible is just the fact that those little things that I've tried like so desperately to fix on my own, um, that when I'm actually spending time in God's word and studying his word, those things start to fix themselves. Not because I'm doing anything, um, but because God's doing something and you can tell when it's not yourself, when there's not tons of effort that's in it, or even just when like what is normally your natural reaction starts to change. And so mm-hmm. I think the biggest change that I've seen in myself is that I'm no longer trying to work towards this goal that I feel like God has set for me. Um, and I feel like in studying the Bible, there's so much freedom to be like, Um, God, what do you want me to work on? And then allowing God to work on those things in you rather than being the person that's like pushing yourself towards goals that might be godly goals, but might not actually be like God transforming your heart and life. And so that's something that I've seen change. There's a million things I've seen change though. And it's really hard to talk about like just one of them or one category of them. But that's like the biggest one that I've seen change. How about you? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. what have you seen yeah I think um going along the lines like for me since I had seen you know all like the laws and the rules of the bible and like pointing out what I was doing wrong in my life and all those things kind of as I studied it more like the transformation that I had was having more grace for myself and having more grace for other people um instead of being the judge instead of um expecting you know certain things to go wrong or right or whatever like Mm -hmm. just having so much more grace in that um and then like another thing is like recognizing the fruits of the spirit like come as a gift from god when we're spending time with him and like when we're in his presence um it's not something that i had to like do right or wrong like I'm either patient or I'm not patient. That's true. (laughs) But, and I still like have to choose to lay myself down every day, um, and deny my flesh. But like, there's so much more grace once you understand like that, that God has that for us. Um, and then I have access to the fruits of his spirit and they're his, um, like they're his fruits. They're not like something that I'm producing. So yeah. Yeah. That's very good. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We just wanted to give you guys a couple tips for yourself for studying the Bible. These are just like some small (laughs) things that we came up with, but (laughs) feel free to comment (laughs) some of your own tips um, about studying the Bible. But yeah. Uh, Yeah. So my first tip is that I think in the church there's... um, I wouldn't say in the church. I think in ourselves, there's this idea that if we don't know, we're really hesitant to like begin to try to find that, which is how I felt when I started studying the Bible. I didn't know what I was reading and I couldn't understand it. And I didn't know if there was something wrong with me or if maybe I just wasn't supposed to understand. But I think my biggest tip is that if you're at a place where you understand nothing, Um, It's not the worst place to be, mainly because when you know a lot of things about the Bible or even religion, uh, it's easy to walk into the Bible with these preconceived notions. Uh, Some people call them lenses, things like that, that might sway you to see one side versus another. And so I think coming in without understanding as scary as it is, um, and as like vulnerable as it makes you feel to like open up the Bible and be like, I know none of this. I actually think it's a really great place to start because it's a clean slate. Um, and if you start by doing that with God, like the things that you're going to learn are going to be amazing. Um, but also another tip that I, I squeezed in here is that there's nothing wrong with using resources that have been written before you. Sometimes... Yeah. I'm prone to be like, I'm going to create my own Bible plan and it's going to be the best when really there are a million Bible plans I could get off of the internet. And sometimes that feels like failure. But if you're starting at a place where you don't know how to start, 
There is nothing wrong with using resources that have already been created by someone that loves the Lord. And I think that's a great place to start. It doesn't make you a failure. It actually just proves that you're wanting something more and that you're seeking God for that. And so those are my two little tips. (laughs) That helps a lot. They're good tips. Um, Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was always praying before and while I was reading. Um, Just to deal with those like, things that I was struggling with, like, what you were saying, like, with God, and, like, bringing those things to him while I was reading, like, if I, you know, was in the Old Testament, for example, and I was, like, seeing stuff that was going on that I didn't (laughs) understand, I'm not thinking of a specific example, but, um, like, asking God, okay, this is what I just read, like, what does this mean, and even if I felt like I didn't have, like, an answer from God, if he wasn't, like, this is exactly what this meant in this moment. Like, and I didn't feel that, um, like light bulb moment from God. It still released a burden for me. Like it still allowed me to see like that God has that grace for you to, and for me to like read and understand. And it's not just like this big mysterious book that he threw at us. Like it's something that he wants to teach us with and Mm -hmm. wants to like, show us more of who he is he's not trying to hide himself and so when I would pray when I like while I was reading the bible it just yeah it it made me less frustrated it Mm -hmm. didn't always bring me clarity like I wanted it to but (laughs) (laughs) like it didn't work like magic but (laughs) not that magic works (laughs) but needless to say like it really helped me like have grace and stuff (laughs) was what I was trying to say no I mean that makes sense um before we go, is there any, like, particular revelation you've had while studying the Bible that's been, like, a really big aha moment for you, or it's just all of it? Because, um, I mean, there's a million different... I think, like, the smallest but most profound thing that I have seen, like, throughout the whole of the Bible is how many times God prophesied something before it happened. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, before he did it or before that event happened. Like, God said, you know, all these, like, specific things, like, through the prophets and Mm -hmm. through so many different circumstances. Like, Jesus, God, whoever, said (laughs) God, said exactly, like, how things were going to happen. And especially, like, with Jesus. Like, seeing, like, reading through the Old Testament and seeing, like, countless people prophesy about Jesus. And then reading the new testament and seeing jesus just like fulfill Fulfill every single (laughs) prophecy it's just like crazy because it's like this is the only book like our god is the only god that like says what he's gonna do before he does Mm -hmm. it and that's like one of the biggest things that separates from like any other religion Mm -hmm. any other yeah um religion yeah (laughs) is is that god like tells us what he's gonna do before he does it and so yeah that's probably the biggest thing yeah that's super awesome um I think Jesus through the whole Bible is one of those things that will never stop blowing my mind because um, I think it's easy to read the Old Testament and be like, war, famine, all these bad things. And then Jesus comes and it's like all better. Um, But I do think Jesus in the Old Testament is wonderful. But one moment that I specifically remember having, oh, something in my eye, (laughs) Um, was in the book of Revelation, which is a scary book also. It's just one of those big daunting books that you're like, yeah okay, we're just going to read Revelation. It's going to be fun. Um, But in the book of Revelation, we were, someone was teaching about it in our SPS and someone mentioned, the teacher mentioned that you need to really really look at who speaks and then who John sees. And I was like, yeah, like that makes sense uh, because there's tons of weird visions and things like that. Mm -hmm. And there's a moment in the book of Revelation where, um, Uh, The Lion of Judah speaks, and John hears him, and then John turns around and sees a lamb that was slain. And I had this weird moment in a random classroom where I was like, wait, that means that, like, the Lion of Judah and the lamb that was slain, like, coexist? Because, I don't know, for some reason I never think of... There's all those paintings of the lion laying with the lamb and things like that. But I've never thought of the fact that God, who is the Lion of Judah, can also be, or Jesus, it's Jesus, sorry. Jesus, who who is the Lion of Judah, is equally as much the Lamb that was slain 
And just the thought of that even before, like even while he's walking on the earth in his ministry, he was equally the Lion of Judah and the Lamb that was slain even before he went to the cross was just like this overwhelming moment for me where I was just like, my human brain could not fathom what was happening because it was just so much. But no, it was one of those moments that was just like a huge blessing to me. And I I love it. It's one of my favorite memories with the Bible, just like seeing the character and nature of God and how it's 100% of all of the things at all times, which is one of those things that I'm like, my little, my little human brain is not doing well with this one, but it's a really cool moment to have. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's sweet. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's all we have. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, have a good weekend. Yeah. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>